Hi guys, we're going to be doing 1-1 practice and problem solving for Envision. So here we go. My name is Jason Jacobs. I'm going to help you with your uh, Envision math homework throughout, throughout this year. So we'll do every problem. They have different numbers, but you can follow the same format and get like a private tutor with your, with your homework. So let's get started. We have four and one tenth plus three and thirteen hundredths. So let's take a look at that. Now, when we add and subtract with decimals, we want to line up the decimals and uh, more importantly, line up the place values. So I'm lining up the place values. You'll notice right here, we need to add a placeholder zero. So I will do that. I'll put a little smiley face there and we'll add that up. Zero plus three is three. And we get seven and 23 hundredths. So let's go ahead and put that in. And did you guys get it right? Let's see if I got it right. Uh, seven and 23 hundredths. Check. Excellent, guys. All right, let's move on to the next one. Find the difference. The difference is the answer to a subtraction problem. So when we add and subtract, we're going to line up these decimals just like this. All right. So we line up the decimals and two minus zero is two. Five minus three is two. The decimals lined up and the place values are all lined up. Now, uh, notice three minus five would be negative two. So we got to borrow. We're going to cross that out, make it a three and then a 13. See how we do that? 13 minus 5, well, that is 8. And 3 minus 2 now, that's 1. That is 1. I will just turn that into a 1. And we have 18 and 22 hundredths. Let's see if 18 and 22 hundredths works for my problem. I know yours has different numbers. And you just can do your work right along with me and we'll have some fun, all right, this year. Here we go, next. You just do your problem right along with me. Four and eight hundred seventeen thousandths plus two and eighteen hundredths. Then it's always good to show them in your notebook. Like this is number three, you would put a three there. This is a line and you would put lots of spacing between so that everything looks good and neat in your math notebook. So you should be writing these out in your math notebook. Please avoid doing these on the calculator because you got to know how to do them without a calculator. It would be a hollow victory if you used a calculator for these because, um, I mean, you could get done with the lesson in like five minutes, but you're not really learning anything. Here we have six and nine hundred ninety-seven thousandths. Six and nine hundred ninety-seven thousandths. Just in case I forget, I'll leave it on the screen. And please be right. Oh, good, it is. It is right. Hooray. We'll go on to the next here. Find the difference. All right, so we have five and five hundred four thousandths, tenths, hundredths, thousandths. That's what that means, okay? little tips and tricks you'll learn here from me. And we are subtracting five and 46 hundredths. And we'll add a placeholder zero. I'll put a smiley face. And we're subtracting, we're finding the difference. Ooh, we got a borrow here. There we are. Okay, 44 thousandths, tenths, hundredths, thousandths. Okay, so we have 44 thousandths here. I hope you had a great day today. And thanks for doing your math here with us. If you ever have any problems with your math, I will be right here. I do every single problem on Envision. You just type in 1-1, uh, practice and problem solving for your grade level, and I would have done it. All right, here we have six times nine tenths. Oh, when you multiply, you do not have to line up your decimals. 
Actually, you just ignore the decimal to the very end. I'll show you what I mean. So 9 times 6 is 50, uh, 54. And then there's one place behind the decimal here. So we'll move one place over right there to get 5.4. 5.4 there. 5.4. Let's see if that's right. Hooray. And we have 12 times 3 hundredths. Notice I do not need to line up my decimals when I multiply. I'm going to wait to the very end to put two places behind the decimal because there's no places here. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 1 is 3. And then that would just be zero and zero. Two places beyond the decimal, one, two, just like that. And we have 36 hundredths. So let's put that in. Hooray. Okay. Oh, did I skip one? I must have skipped one. Let's do this one now. 21 times 11 hundredths. Don't need to line up the decimals when we multiply. Oh, okay. So here I've already used the one. So now I do one times one, but I got to put a placeholder zero here. So that's a placeholder zero when you do that. And then one times two is two. And we add up the partial products. And there are two places behind the decimal here. So I'm going to move two places behind the decimal here. Two and 31 hundredths, guys. All right. And some of you might not have to do the full 15 problems, but you just get a little extra practice of them of seeing how to do it. So here we have one and two tenths times 42 hundredths. We don't need to line up the decimals, but at the very end, I'll show you something really cool. Uh, two times two is four, two times one is two, placeholder zero. Four times two is eight, and four times one is four. How are you guys doing with yours? And we'll add those partial products. Notice I'm ignoring the decimal until the very end. All right, now we're to the very end. And we have one place here and two places here. One plus two is three. You guys try. One plus two is three places. So I go over three places here. And we get 504 thousandths. It's in the thousands place. Thousands, the T H at the end. Five hundred four thousands. All right. You guys are doing great. Keep it up. And think every math problem you do is like getting five dollars. Not now, of course, but when you are older, you're investing in yourself now by doing this. Uh, 3 and 13 hundredths times 5 and 72 hundredths. I'm really glad you get to see one of these because we're going to have three partial products down here. Okay, and the decimal is going to move over 2 and 2, which is 4 places. So uh, we'll just start with the 2. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 2 is, or 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 3 is 6. And now one placeholder zero. So I've already used this two. I'm going to cross it out. Seven times three is 21. Carry the two. Seven times one is seven plus two is nine. And seven times three is 21. All right, now we've already used that seven and that two. Now when we do the five times three here, guys, I'm going to add two placeholder zeros, okay? Two placeholder zeros. Five times three is 15. And 5 times 1 is 5, plus 1 is 6, and 5 times 3 is 15. I'm going to add up all these partial products. 
B, and then um, the 6 and the 5 is 11, plus 9 is 20. Okay, and as you notice, we have two places beyond the decimal, two places, 2 plus 2 is 4 places. So I move over four places behind the decimal. 17 and 9,036 ten thousandths, guys. Wow, look at that. 17 and 9,036 ten thousandths. Oh, please be right. Please be right. Hooray. Now, sometimes it's not right, and you just got to persevere through it. There's question helps up here. You could do help me solve this, viewing an example, animations, or you could just watch, watch my videos, which is another help feature you have. Sometimes you might just want to come here and just find one problem that you might be struggling with, and I'll be right here to help you through the entire assignment or just one problem. Okay. Write a number sentence that illustrates the following. A number with two decimal places multiplied by a number with one decimal place. The following product has only two non-zero digits. Okay, so we have two decimal places multiplied with one decimal place. We'll have three decimal places. So if you look here at this one, two plus one is three, but look, they have one, two, three, four. So, so not that. And now I'm checking out B. One place and one place equals two places, but they wanted a two and one. So that would be C. Oh no, what happened? Oh, cause look, two and one, would be three, but that only has two here. So it would be D, guys. It would be D. I, I was um, getting too overconfident, I think. So it would be D. And that just proves I can make a mistake too. And it's okay to make mistakes. We can learn from them. It's not what happens to you. It's how you react to it. All right. This is my first time using the stylus on my new board. If you check out topic seven and topic eight, which I've already done with my students, you can see that I was using a dry erase board behind me. If fruit juice company includes one and 775 thousandths ounces of apple juice in a six and 65 hundredths ounce bottle of mixed fruit juice, how much of the bottle of mixed fruit juice is not apple juice. Ooh, is not. So that means if this is apple juice and if this is apple juice and this is mixed fruit, we're going to have to subtract. So how much is not apple juice? So this is the total. It might look so I, I rushed it. I, I wrote it here, but this is the total. Six and sixty-five hundredths is actually greater because if you line up the place values, the six is the six is greater than the one here. So let's take a look. We're going to subtract this now. And we have one and seven hundred and seventy-five thousandths. And let's subtract. So we have zero minus five. Nope. Five minus nope. Six minus seven. Okay, so we got to borrow. That four and this a ten, then four minus seven. Nope. So we got to borrow here. Make that a five and this a fourteen. Fourteen minus seven is seven. Five minus seven. Nope. We're gonna borrow from the six, and that becomes a five and now fifteen. Fifteen minus seven is eight. At a placeholder zero. Five minus one is four. So four and eight hundred seventy-five thousandths. Let's see if that works. Oh, please. Fantastic. Oh, I, I get excited by it too, guys. I get excited by it too. Hey, this is going to be part one. Stay tuned for part, part two coming up next.